Hey, welcome to the Eric J. The Great Podcast. Coming to you live on the Anchor app. Want to give a special shout out to the Anchor for distributing this podcast and and being one of my uh, my main sponsor for this podcast. Um, I would like to welcome uh, Lakendrick Thomas for uh, for dropping in today. Hey, how you doing today, man? I'm good, man. What what's going on? Yeah, we're going all right, man. Just got to, I want to talk about uh three or four topics today and uh basically we just have an open conversation to get your opinion on them. Okay, okay, okay. Um so first off, uh, racism in today's climate. Now we all know how racism was back in the civil rights movement and how, you know, it was more open, you know, there was more vicious back in the sixties and the fifties in that era. But uh wanna get your opinion on uh how do you view racism in today's uh way of life and uh what is a way that we can uh, eventually eliminate it. Man, how, basically, man, how I view racism in today's life, man, is uh, it 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 goes back to the uh, but because now I think I I truly believe that uh, the generation that I grew up in, we really don't know much about racism as far as the white people. So as far as the white kids, they they really don't know uh where where the uh racism derived from. So I think racism comes from it has to be embedded into them in order for them to understand. The, the, to have hatred toward black black people, you see what I'm saying? Because it wasn't it wasn't nothing that they was born into. It was more like it had to be passed down from them. Or it has to be, it had to be embedded in their brains to you know have some type of hatred towards uh towards black people. So that's what I feel because uh we we we're a long generation. We're we're a long ways from uh you know when segregation uh days and stuff was going on and racism was going on man so i i feel like that it had to be bedded down from uh ancestors like great grandpa great grandmothers great grandfathers and stuff like that so that stuff was passed down to the, to their kids you know to have to, towards black people yeah i feel like uh i feel the same way um i feel like with everything else uh, going on today with the peaceful protesting mm-hmm. and the, with racism, I feel like, hey, hey, bro, what's that noise? Come on, bad. I don't know. Yeah, let's oh. stand. Yeah, what's up? But um, I feel like everything going on with the uh, racism today. Uh, a lot of people tried to hide it. And uh, try to disguise it, but it's just a thing. Now we we so advanced now as a people. I feel like that uh, with the with the killings, with the police brutality, everybody's holding people accountable now, and they don't know how to handle that. You know, because you know back in the day, people used to take stuff. And never used to rebut or nothing like that. And now we get into a time where, you know, everybody's more smarter, everybody's in more powerful positions. So everybody had a own social media platform. So it's kind of hard for them to try to pull the same stuff that they was doing to our ancestors like 50 years ago. Right, right, right. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, man. But I, I think nowadays, man, we got more uh we got more white supporters, man. Like I say, uh a lot of the kids that uh they they grew up while a lot of the white kids nowadays don't they don't really know about, you know what I'm saying, that like, you know, the the the, the true racism that they they uh that they ancestors did back in the day, like the the hatred toward black people. I I don't think they uh the animosity is not the same that they had to uh black people back in the day because they wouldn't you know, what I'm saying it's generations done passed since since the uh the the racism days uh back in the day, but now that stuff still it still exists, man. But it's it's not as bad because uh you know the white people we 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 really out of that out of that time and place where where that stuff happens. But we got the older older generation that are still in, in uh 
in power, like as far as like the Senate, you know what I'm saying, the legislature and stuff like that. Like we have people that's in power that are still making the uh making the rules and stuff like that. So once we get them out of out of the seats and stuff like that, we'll be able to change the you know, so change the way that we go about the segregation. Yeah, that leads that leads into my next topic as far as like the importance of voting. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of a hurdle because you know as in school, you know, I feel like in grade school they don't teach kids in general what they need to know to succeed in life. They teach you a lot of stuff that you don't even use. Like they they, they don't teach kids about voting or credit or nothing like that, you know what I'm saying? Right. So right. I feel like with voting, that's always going to be a hurdle, but it, it, I feel like it's on the parents to instill that when that kids get of age, the importance of voting, the pass, the pass on that habit of uh, of people getting down there and voting for these uh, local officials and the big elections in the Senate, the House, and the uh, the presidential election. Because uh, uh, that's the only way I feel like uh, it's going to change, but. It's kind of hard to, uh, cause you know how young people are set up now. You know everybody like living in their own fantasy world. Don't nobody really be paying attention to what's nothing. going on. Right, right, right. I agree, man. Uh, I agree, man. It, it starts at the it starts at the lowest level. Uh, like you say, uh, vote for vote for city council. You know, what I'm saying from city council to mayors, to mayors to the uh, you know, to 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 the. You know, to the state legislator, man, to the to the governors and stuff like that, to the governors on up to the to the Senate, you know, to the House of Representatives and stuff like that, on up to the president. So it, it starts at the lowest level, man. We have we have to put the right people in place. So we gotta put the right city councilmen in. We gotta put the right mayors in. We gotta put the right governors in in order for us to, you know what I'm saying, for us to have a voice, you know, you know, you know, in order to to, to get through to, to the bigger to the bigger picture, which is the, the presidential election, you know. Because a lot of times, me from being from Alabama, I never seen Alabama, you know, a, a, a blue state. It's always been a red state. Red state, you know, meaning for for Republicans. So even if we do vote, we can go out and vote and do all that stuff like that. I never seen in my years of, uh, you know, of, of, of voting and being and being here and being alive to see. I never seen Alabama a uh, uh, always seen Alabama a red state. So we have to get out and start from the front of the beginning, you know, as far as like the city councilmen, the mayors and stuff like that. That stuff that stuff has to start from 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 the lowest level on up to the highest level up to the president. Man. Yeah, it's a lot of people are uneducated too, because everybody has this stigma of saying that the only election that matters is the presidential elections, no. and that's so false. Right. You know, you know, because the presidential election, it affects you to a certain extent, but it really don't affect you. Like, the local stuff is what affects you, like the prosecutors, right? the, pe- the people the attorneys, passing the state laws. Right, the district attorneys and stuff like that. Right, right, right. Those those, those people do play a, uh, play a big role, man. Uh, so we, so we got to get out and vote, man. We got to get out and vote. I know, uh, you know, we got elections coming up soon. So, so don't be deterred, man. Don't be deterred when you go to the polls and they say, hey, uh, you know, uh, you know, it's a five hour wait. You know, uh, we know it's hot outside. You know, just 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 be prepared to in order to 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 to, you know, overcome adversity to make a change, because a lot of times they try to detour us. They try to detour us from from making a change in in our environment because they hold, okay, it's a five hour wait, you know, in, in, in the black usually normally vote at you know we vote at the rec centers or whatever like that and it's usually a long line it's a five or six hour wait some people have to go to work some people have to do certain things but we just have to overcome those obstacles man you know what i'm saying just stay the course and be able to stay there and hang in there in order to make a change you know so yeah, i, I, I you know. know what you was about to say yeah yeah i said man we, we just got to stay the course man because a lot of times in, in the white communities that you can go in, you can go in and vote and, and, and be in and out within minutes, you know. But but a lot of times in the black communities where we vote at, man, the, the places that how they how they set us up is they set us up with these broken machines. I mean, we can go back from the uh, from the last presidential election where the, where the, the machines was broken. 
you know, even even the uh, the, uh, the the governor election up in uh, Georgia, where they had the machines broken, you know, and, and it, it had these minorities waiting outside for five and six hours at a time, knowing that they, you know, they had things to do. They didn't want to wait out there, and, you know, in long lines and stuff like that. So they kind of detoured them. It's kind of hard for us to to get our vote in when the votes are when you say, okay, the machine broke, but I don't wait for five hours. You know, it, it, it's deterring for us to 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 want to go and vote, go out and vote, you know, and make our vote count. You know, they make it harder for us, but we just got to stay course, man, and, and, and make it happen. One thing I didn't understand is that voting is still so old fashioned. I I don't I don't know why they haven't switched to some type of digital system mm. where I feel like, I feel like everybody should still fill out their absentee ballot and do that. Mm-hmm. But I feel like it should be somewhere on the internet where they can verify with your social security number that you're valid to vote mm-hmm. and you can just go and vote and they calculate it that way versus people waiting in line in person. You know what I'm saying? That don't make sense to me. Right, yeah. That, that's that's some of the system changes, man, that we had to put in place, man. Like I said, that was one of the obstacles that we have, man, ahead of, ahead of us in order to, you know what I'm saying, to, to make the change, man. They, they try to put so many obstacles ahead of us in order to make it difficult to, for, for us to make change, but like the stuff like that, those are those are the things that we we, we need to put in place now, like to, to, to change the way that, that the voting system is done. You know, make it easier, make it more convenient for people to vote. You know, once they make it more convenient to be, for people to vote, then I think more people will start voting, right? And more votes will start to count, and then we can really get a picture of what we need to be at and where we need to be in, in, inside of the you know inside of the United States. You know what I'm saying? And, and until then, I think, like you say, the 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 the, the, the voting system is just rigged, man. It's it's rigged. It's, it's catered toward the toward the majority of people, toward the to to the Caucasian population. You know, it's the easier for them to vote, but it's harder for us to vote. You know, that's just one of those things. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, I understand that. Uh... Uh, we just had a big tragedy in America two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, George Floyd uh, was uh, brutally murdered on the street by these four cops. Mm-hmm. And uh, one cop with knee on his neck. Mm-hmm. I know he's on a million-dollar bond. The actual cop that need him on the neck, they put the other guys on a $100,000 bond. But the judge just released them temporarily. I guess until trial, so uh, they just buried George Floyd yesterday. It's just a real sad situation, mm-hmm. and it's kind of crazy how we don't see people get killed by the police before, like little snippet videos and stuff. But it's kind of crazy how this one murder um, got the whole country awake and and seek, mm-hmm. you know, with with the protesting and all that stuff. So I want to get your opinion on how did you feel when you first found out about it and what do you think that they uh the men the Minnesota should do mm-hmm. as far as like prosecuting those four cops and what is your opinion on uh peacefully protesting around America? Right, man. So when I when I first saw it, man, it it was just to me. I, I viewed it as inhumane. Something that was inhumane. You you have to, you have to have you 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 can't have a heart if if you can sit up and watch somebody die on live t television like that on on like live, you know. And I watched it. And I'm I'm thinking like, oh my god, like how is this even happening? You know, somebody's getting killed like live. It's being recorded live. You know what I'm saying? So, so I couldn't fathom it. Like I, I was, I was, I was trying to get the grip. Like, okay, is this America? Like, is is this is this what we live in? Is this what black people live in every day? Is this what we have to go through? That this guy's his he's been suffocated. He's calling for his mom. He can't breathe. He's been suffocated while all these other officers around him aren't doing anything. You know what I'm saying? And so my biggest thing is like we have to take accountability of one another. Right? If I put myself in a position, if I was one of the, the one of the other officers on on duty, then then I would have to step in and say something. Even if I was the guy that was recording it on live, I would have had to intervene and say, "Hey, 
this is too much. I would have had to physically, me, I put myself in that position. I would have had to physically intervene. So I can't imagine just being there on scene, seeing that stuff live and, you know what I'm saying, live and in person, man. So it's just one of those things that it just made my blood boil, man. It's just one of those things that the, 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 how the justice system is set up. You can, you, you feel comfortable killing a black man on live, you know what I'm saying, live television, live, don't care, have no care, man. And so I think one of the things that we have to do, man, in, in Minnesota, and I, I even listened to the mayor of Minnesota, man, that, that guy was compassionate. He's very compassionate about, you know, about, about the incident that happened, the incident that took place, and, and the way to move forward from that. You know, I, I don't feel that he had any racism in his heart, no hatred in his heart towards black people, because he, even when he was giving his interview, he broke down on, on live television. You know, and and that for for a mayor or somebody in in a, in a in a political position that he's in, that you don't usually you gonna tip you don't typically see uh see emotions you know come from a person like that. But from him, I think it was very sincere. I think that Minneapolis is moving in the right direction. But as far as the as far as the uh peaceful protests, I mean, we just had Colin Kaepernick that done a, a peaceful 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 protest years ago, and it, it went unheard. So sometimes you have to you have to you have to be heard in order to make a change, right? As far as like you know, uh, you know, doing the, the uh, you know burning down buildings and, and, and tearing down buildings and stuff like that. Sometimes it, you just have to be heard. We have to be heard because if we done we tried it the peaceful way. Kaepernick tried. It. Kaepernick's Kaepernick's without a job in the National Football League, you know, and, and, and so it's one of those things that we if that don't work, then what do we do? You know, if we do this, now we start to grab the attention of, of people, right? So now it seems like if we do this, oh, now they hear us. So I think we are moving in the right direction because I think pre- we, we, can, we can do peaceful protests, but do they really hear us? But, but when we make some noise, and I think they start to hear us, right? Because that now people, people, businesses and stuff like that, that stuff coming to play money, all right? America is built around money, so when you start to involve money and, and, and destructing these people's property, then then something's going something's going to shake, right? And that's just what I believe, you know. Well, I had a conversation with this gentleman the other day, and it just amazes me how, you know, people just walk around and live life like they don't know the history of their people. But I had to tell this other black guy that I was having a debate with the other day when I was in a grocery store. I had to tell him. I was like, yo, you do realize like African Americans was way more wealthier than white people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was like, if you just look up, if you just compile all the history, I was like, so everybody's putting, everybody's getting their feelings about all this rioting and looting, but in the reality, white people have been looting since the beginning of time. Since the beginning. Since the beginning. They 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 looted they looted they looted from the pilgrims. That's why they get a check every month. Right. They try to pay them back. From them. Right. Right. But then then as far as African Americans, a lot of people don't know about this story. But in Oklahoma, you had Wall Street. You know there was a uh, African American group. It was they had their own economy. It was a black group full of millionaires. Mm-hmm. They bombed them, killed everybody in the building, stole Wall Street from them, rebuilt it, and and put their people in there. So I really, I mean, I don't agree with the looting and rioting, but I understand it because at the same time, everybody pays tax dollars, and all these multi-million dollar companies got insurances and stuff like that. So everybody's trying to throw this pity party you know what i'm saying they could easily replace everything that they lost right so i don't really i don't really feel sorry for corporations that come in our community and just take from us but you don't see none of them down there on the front lines supporting oh, nothing right. that we got going right i mean so so think about it man when when it when when a team when a team win a super bowl a uh NBA finals or something like that. What do you think happens in the city? Right? They like they burn down buildings. Like everybody go crazy. They they burn stuff. Like it's 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 a massive celebration and nobody sees anything wrong with that. You know? But as soon as a a, a 
that black people get together and start to form, you know, a coalition that that we're on that we're on the same team. We stop the black on black crime for a minute. We 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 go in and we and we form a bond and and we do things together. Then it's an issue. You ever notice that that it's always an issue when black people come together and and, and be on and, and form a team. And, and it, it's always an issue. You know, and, and it's not as just black people. It's 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 all racist this time around. That's why I feel like it's different. You know, it, it's it's not just black people; it's white people. It's 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 people from different races around the world, man. That that they we came together this time for for one time that we came together and we agree on one thing, right? So it, it's not just the loot, the looting that there it, it's it's not the people that are out there protesting for George Floyd that are looting. You know, it, it's the people that use they're they're using the protest and 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 the silent uh, uh the the the, the silent protesting that we're doing the marching and stuff like that they're using that and they're looting at the same time we 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 can't take we can't take the take the blame for the looting and stuff like that because that's not just all the protesters that's not part of the protest and the protesting are the people out there that's you know that's that's got the signs and stuff like that that's doing the right thing but it's a lot of people out there outside of the, of the protesting that are looting we can't we can't do that and that's all racist you know, that's that's not just black people. That's all racist. They're out there using that for an excuse. We can never get rid of you know the people that are gonna do the bad things. But we have people out there that are doing the right thing, that are protesting peacefully and stuff like that, and they're still getting beat down police by police and stuff like that, man. So it is one of those things that that it is it it, it never it, you never see a change, man. It's everlasting, man. So it's it's one of those things. I feel like with the looting they kind of set themselves up because everybody was at a breaking point. We had multiple murders of black people getting killed and nothing happening. All these people getting off. So I feel like, and it's a combination of three months. You had people, you know, took people's jobs away from them right. because of the corona. You said, tell them that they couldn't do nothing. They couldn't enjoy their lives. Had to stay in the house for three months. And then you kill a black man on national TV, you know what I'm saying? So it's kind of hard for you to tell a, a citizen not to be outraged, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, and anybody that has African-American friends, like we've seen in a protest that's not African-American, are going to support their friends if they're real friends because anybody with common sense can see that we're wrong. Right. Right. So man, I, I I just feel like I just feel like man, the looting and stuff like that, like that that's part of it. But however, man, the bigger picture we have to understand the bigger picture. Like we all we all, we always try to pull the negative out the positive, right? So that's that's what we build on. Just like when Captain Neil he took a knee, you know, during the national anthem, it was all about the oh the flag, the veterans and stuff like that. But that's not what it was about. It was a, it was about the the you know the. We don't have the we don't enjoy the same freedoms that the, the the white people do in America, you know. So so why should we have the same pride and you know and, and, and that that we have about the American flag and, and it's not equal. We we're not sharing the equal. We're not sharing the equal rights. No, it, and nothing here is equal. It's always been one sided. It's always been fair toward the Caucasians, right? Never catered toward the black. We get killed in broad daylight. Just for example. For, uh, I mean, I mean, George Floyd. That's 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 the last example that we had. He was killed on national television, and you tell you telling me that the, the flag stands for something. What does it really stand for, right? That made me question what does what do we as a nation stand for, right? And so, so me by me taking the knee during the national anthem, what does that really like? What does that really have to do with the flag and the veterans and the people who died for the for the, you know, for for the United States of America, right? Because we had black people die for the United States of America. We had all races. It wasn't just white people, right? It was all nations. A lot of people sacrificed their freedom to fight, to fight for this nation, right? It, it's not just the white people. So you, you're looking at us, you know, we're taking the knee on our ancestors, right? We're taking the knee on our ancestors. We're making a stand. We're not only making a stand against white people, we're making a stand against the nation, the United States of flag stands for we're calling it out we're saying hey is this really for me you know it's the united states of america really representing me 
right? So why should I represent the United States of America? And that's just one of those things, man. Yeah, because um, four years ago when Kaepernick did that, everybody looked at him as a criminal. Now he's going most likely go down behind Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, and other people that took a important stand like Rosa Parks as one of those people in a modern day era that took a stand peacefully and got punished for it and lost everything that he worked for. Well, I ain't gonna say everything he worked for, but everything that he enjoyed doing as far as like right. what what he was called to do as far as like being an NFL player, they took that away from him. Mm-hmm. So so I don't I feel like the NFL, they can't do nothing to make that up just for the simple fact that they're gonna they're in a lose lose situation. If they bring them back now, then it then people are gonna say, Oh, you only brought them back because of what's going on in America. Right. 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 So so it's kinda a lose lose situation, but I do feel like all the owners uh and that league in general need to apologize to him. And basically, um, I know the commissioner came out and apologized, but I don't feel like it was sincere. I feel like they should have a real legit uh, press conference instead of doing it on like a live video. Right. But but uh, one thing that I've been observing, you you, you don't see none of these coaches – or none of these um, owners speaking out about what's going on. And Jerry Jones was the only owner in the NFL that told his players that they had to stand for the national anthem or he was going to kick them off the team. But you don't hear that from him with all this racism stuff going on. So it kind of brings in question, like, what type of person he really is, you know what I'm saying? So, so that goes back to what I was saying about the, about the, the generations, man. You know, you know, Jerry Jones, those people, they're, they're in their 70s, man, 70s and up. They're, they're just like Donald Trump, just like the president of the United States of America. Those people who are in their 70s, man, they're stuck in their ways. Yeah. They, they, that stuff has been embedded in them. So it's hard to get that hatred and, and that 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 feeling of of betterment out them. They feel that they're better, better than black people. They feel like they should be in, in you know in, in more predominant roles than black people. They feel like they should be owners of black people, just like the owners of the NFL. The majority of the owners of the NFL are white people, right? Right? White billionaires that feel like they are better than black people. So they have that feeling of entitlement. For them to come out and say something, it, it would be them pretty much abandoning their their you know their their, their way of life and, and the things that they stand for. I, I believe that Jerry Jones would never come out and say anything. You know, if he does, then that would be something that's surprising to me. And I really, really sincerely wouldn't I wouldn't sincerely feel it from him if he came out because he's being forced to okay Jerry Jones say something Jerry Jones say something Jerry Jones say something because if something is sincere and you want to say something you feel a certain way about something it wouldn't take people to say hey you should say something it would be on your conscience to say hey this is wrong right hey I don't feel like this is right you know but but for somebody who sits there quiet and know that they, they can make a change and affect the situation that's going on at hand, and if they don't say nothing, I believe that they're for the cause. They're, they're not for the, for the betterment of the solution, right? And so that, that's just the way I feel. I, I feel Jerry Jones is, is, is embedded in him to be, you know, th- this privileged white man that, that, that would never, you know, want to be equal with, with black people. You know, this is one of those things, man. Yeah, we face a lot of challenges right now as a people, but uh, it's just real. The real, the thing that I can take positive from all this is that uh, in my time of living, I haven't seen uh, people as one, not just African-Americans, but everybody as one just come together for one common cause. And... Uh, basically just be human beings and, and love each other, you know what I'm saying? Right. You know, everybody be in their own circles and, you know, uh, 
this situation with the corona and with all this stuff really don't humbled a lot of people, you know, because a lot of people, the corona don't affect everybody. Even if you got money, you're not making the money that you was making when everything was normal. So, you know, you, so it affected everybody. So everybody's going through the same thing together. So it's kind of like, you know, when George Floyd got killed, I mean, I hate that he had to lose his life, but it's almost like it was a sacrifice to the other side of something good, you know what I'm saying, as far as, like, everybody coming together. Right. It it, it was, man. It, it's one of those things that, uh, you know, unfortunate things happen, and, and things have to take place in order for things to change, right? So it with, with – you know, with every situation, there there's a cause for a change, man. And so with with George Floyd, unfortunately, man, he had to lose his life the way that he's done. But in order for in order for us for for the the world to make a change, something drastic has to has to change. Like something drastic has to happen in order for us to move forward. You know, in in, in a progressive way, man. So that's that's the thing that's 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 unfortunate. You know. Uh, that George Floyd had to pass in this situation had to come around. But those are one of those things that those are one of the the the, the 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 stepping stones, those are one of the things that we have to build on and, and you know, uphold the people who died, you know, in situations like that and and, and cherish them and, and hold them up and, and, and let them know that we're making a change for them. You know, that's that that goes back to the, you know, Back in the days, it's from the Martin Luther Kings, you know, the Malcolm X's, the people like that, man, the people that died. You know, the Rodney Kings, the people that actually died, man, making a sacrifice for the be- for, for something bigger than them- themselves, man. They made a sacrifice for something bigger than themselves in order to make a change. So that's that that what has to happen in order for us to make a change, man. All right, man. Uh, before we get off of here, man, uh, one last thing, uh, I'm gonna I'm say mine first. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to get your I want to get your opinion on what you think all the cops should get. How they should prosecute the cops? I know they upgraded the first cop up to second degree murder mm-hmm. and uh, manslaughter charge. So I feel like, uh, in my opinion, it's kind of hard to prosecute somebody for first degree murder, right? So I feel like the second degree is pretty heavy because they raised it from third. Right. So I feel like I feel like uh, he should get second degree with manslaughter, and uh, and I feel like all the other three cops should get manslaughter and third degree murder. Right. Right. Now, now, uh, give me all three of them would do less time than the one that had his foot on the neck, but. All four of them has to be punished to send a message to other cops. Like you have to hold people because it's almost like being in the military. Like in the military, if you if you do something, you getting prosecuted by both sectors. So you you got to hold these cops to the same standard. You got to hold them to a higher standard because you putting them in in uh, in a in a in a powerful position to have their hands over people's freedom and people's livelihood. So for you, for them to do something wrong and you not to hold them accountable when you know that they did something wrong, you know, that's, that's kind of messed up because if, if the shoe was on the other end and one of us, a regular citizen, did something wrong, we'll be sitting in jail for years until we get a trial date. Right, right. Uh, pretty much, man. Pretty much, uh, I feel like, like, like you say, it's hard to prove first degree murder. So it, we, we're better off, you know, trying them on the second degree because then, then we have more ground to in order for it to stick. Because a lot of times, man, with first degree murder, this is very hard to prove that you know. And if and if he was acquitted of first degree murder, then it would be this this world would go into you know what I'm saying to. To, to a whole different level. So I feel like secondary, second degree is warranted enough, even though we feel like it may be first degree, but it's in order for them to, to, to find this guy guilty of murder, and then second degree, second degree would be the better, the better way to go. 
Uh, I think he's he's guilty of second degree murder. I think they'll be able to prove he's guilty of second degree murder. And all of it, for all the other other cops that there were, uh, I feel I feel like they should be charged with manslaughter because I think they are part of the problem. Because there's no way that if you have some type of humanity, some type of you know some type of humanity for yourself, you would not let nobody sit up and kill somebody in front of your face. Then I feel like you're just as responsible as this person that that who was committing the crime. Yeah, I feel the exact same way, man. Hopefully that they prosecute these cops in a timely manner. And the same thing with the Breonna Taylor case out here in Louisville, where they still got these cops on administrative leave and haven't even thought about prosecuting them. And the mayor is not even saying anything about it. Uh, I hope that they um, prosecute those cops too because they killed her on a no-knock warrant. They just ran in the house and started shooting. And the person they were looking for was already in jail so uh it's a bad it's a messed up situation with all these murders happening uh the key one uh, all of them are key but the the one that everybody is talking about is george floyd and brianna taylor so hopefully that uh people can get some sense and people keep protesting and putting the pressure on these local administrations to do what they've been put in office to do, and that's to uh, be the voice for the people and hold these people accountable when they don't uh, fulfill their obligations or what they're supposed to do. Right. Right. Yeah, man. So we we, we just got to get the right people in place, man, the right uh... – like first starts from district attorney, city, uh, city council, mayors in place like that. We we got to get the right people in place, man, in order to make a change. Yeah, that's that's bottom line. Yep. But yeah, uh, yeah, uh, Lakendra, man, I uh, appreciate you uh, coming on to the Air J the Great podcast, where uh, where all lives matter and. Uh, I uh, want to give a special shout out to uh, Anchor again for sponsor this podcast. Uh, this podcast will be on nine different uh, platforms. It will definitely be on Spotify uh, later on tonight. And uh, once again, I appreciate you for coming on, man. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Thanks for uh, having me. Okay, then. Uh, have a nice night. All right. All right.